This is Andy Pure for Boxing News. I'm joined by trainer Shane McGuigan here in London. Shane, first here, how are you? How's love treating you? Good, thanks, Andy, mate. Yeah, all good. Looking forward to this one. So, first little bit now of the, the build up, so exciting times. Does this fight mean as much to you, Shane, as what I imagine you just to Chris, the chance to run it back, the defeat to Richard, the chance to put things right? Does it mean as much to you? Definitely. I mean, um, you know, I, I felt like the first fight was was in the balance, you know, like, did you favour the volume of the punches with Chris or did you favour the, the power and the slightly more eye-catching shots of Richard? They're both inexperienced um, over the distance. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it, it, it was a bit of a frustrating, um, frustrating loss for us, but at the same time, you know, it made Chris Burns Smith a better, stronger person. So, you know, you, like, I don't think if, he, if he'd have won that, would he have continued to strive for every extra little ounce of, uh, of a percent that his body is, is capable of giving which he's been doing for the last you know four or five years so um, yeah looking forward to it. completely different fighters and um, it's gonna be a much much more exciting fight I, I believe. Chris quite confidently on stage said that he does feel that he's improved the more of the two of them I think most people would probably agree when you look at the records and what they've gone on to do in the period since the first fight but with Richard what developments have you seen in him since their first outing together? I think Richard's improved a lot I think he's got a lot cuter with his shots he sets his shots up a lot better um, but you know Chris, Chris always had the capability to show what he what he's showed in the last few fights and also, he's had a couple of performances, like Masternick wasn't a, a good performance for him. But, you know, he's got an ability to turn things around and, and, and grid it out, which he never knew he had um, in that first fight. And it was, a, it was a slightly overwhelming experience for him. He, was, he didn't know how to pace himself. There's a lot of variables there. This is over 12 rounds. He's the more active fighter in terms of, um, you know, the last 24 months, 18 months, um, you know, um, I, I, I believe like they, they both improved. I think Riyadh has got, you know, as I said, a bit cuter with his attacks. But as he's mentioned on stage, that his his unique selling point is his power, um, whereas Chris isn't. You know, Chris isn't, and they might say it's his toughness. But Chris is the first person to say it's not his toughness that is it's his uh, his best asset. Um, and I believe. Um, his consistency throughout the rounds is what's going to win the fight. Shane, Richard did mention on stage that right, he feels that Chris is deteriorating and I imagine by that he means kind of his ability to hold a shot. We know that Chris has had some tough fights in his career. He mentioned yourself and he said that in fights you're telling him to move his head because he's maybe taking a little bit too much. What do you make of Richard when he raises that as a point? It's all mind games, you know. Um, Chris is a, he's a very intelligent and body aware person. He knows when he's in control or when he's not. And, um, in terms of his en engine, in terms of his ability to take a shot, he's, he's clever enough and, and got enough know-how to, to realize if someone's got the power to hurt him. You know, in the Masonic fight, he gave away far too many shots, but the first thing he said after the fight was like, just, I was just so lax because I just knew he wasn't going to hurt me. He hit me with his best shots and, you know, you, you never want to. You never want to rely on that. You know what I mean. You never want to rely on that toughness. But um, I think what he might mean is not necessarily from a chin perspective. Maybe just more from a wear and tear perspective, like cuts and things like that. Um, and that's something that, as you get older with your career, you do end up getting a few more cuts. Look at Ricky Hatton in his career. He did he had a lot of fights, and and by the end he was he was getting cut most fights. So um, you know. But, but that's it. That's just the way. That's the way Chris gets his results. He he has to drag. He has to he has to get into the fight, and he has to you know drag a lot out of his opponents and to 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 get them to work. And that's where he feels at his at his best. Chris has obviously built a very hardcore following down in Bournemouth. His last few fights taking place down there. Why Selhurst Park? Why go as the champion into the away corner, if you will? Up until two days before we announced the fight, we were still trying to get it down in Bournemouth, right? And Boxer still wanted it down in Bournemouth, right? Because they knew it was a much more guaranteed ticket sales and they knew that it was not even... Like, right now, they're, they're working with the unknown. Down there, they know it's a, it's a guaranteed sell. But unfortunately, Bournemouth are relaying the pitch and we went, I mean... I went to school with a kid that's dad, dad used to, um, you know, own Bournemouth, and we were, we went above and beyond, trying to get um, trying to get it down there, but just 
as it as it stood in the end, we just couldn't. It was not feasible. They just weren't going to allow another boxing event um, it, 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 down, uh, on the pitch that year. So the other options were Wembley, the O2 Arena, or Sellers Park. And you know, Chris was quite happy and confident that you know that that's a great option. I think it's something different. You know, if he was just to go in the O2 Arena or Wembley. It's just not as much of a spe uh, spectacle, you know. People get excited about the fact that it is, um, it is going to be outdoors, and it's it's a summer, and they can make a good event of it. And Boxer do a very good job of, of making an event of a stadium fight like that. So, uh, yeah, we're we're happy, um, it's, and it's also as, as Chris said, he, he can use it as fuel to you know prepare himself. Shane, just away from Chris, I um, haven't had a chance to speak to you since Adam Azim Harlem Eubank talk was all coming to the fore. What can you tell me as to where things currently stand with that? Right now, uh, we're just working on a date. So, yeah, there was potential that it was going to be on this one, but um, it's looking like it's going to be later on in the summer. Um, what was your take, because again, I haven't had a chance to ask you, on the whole Dalton Smith situation, pulling out to then go with the Eubank fight, what was your personal feelings around it? I was pretty pro it, to be honest. I feel like, you know, the, the, the fight, I mean, it's manager at the end of the day, and I, and I believe that um, if you look at it, just simply from a business perspective, like. Adam Azim and Dalton Smith don't sell enough tickets to merit it being a seven-figure payday for each boxer. And um, I believe that you, you know, it's not a smash-and-grab tactic with Adam Azim. It's a long-term plan. And, um, you know, the, the fights him boxing Harlem Eubank and beating Harlem Eubank and hopefully knocking him out makes his name and brand a lot bigger. Um, and these things, I mean, if Dalton Smith's a good fighter, he's always going to be there. I believe Adam, Smith, uh, Adam Azim's always going to be there as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one that's just... The more Eddie Hearn with his million-plus followers talks about Adam Azim, the better it is it's because he just keeps building his brand up and, and, and making him more and more relevant. So then that, in, in the long run, is going to, going to equate to more, more money. And you only get one or two op opportunities to box a big domestic rival uh, for a lot of money, and I think that is that is that's his guy, Adam's guy, obviously Dalton. How far away do you think that first fight could be? Because a few people have suggested to me that maybe it could be a trilogy fight if all of them are close fights, depending on how they all play out. Obviously, Chris, he's facing Richard years on from when they first fought down at kind of British level. Do you not see that similar type of way a fight could be built between the pair of them? The way you look at it like this is like everyone says, "Oh, George Groves boxed James the Gale." Right, so, but if you look, but George Groves never got a chance to box James the Gale again. Close fight. George Groves got about eight times the amount of money to box Jamie Cox as a world champion than he did James the Gale. Don't quote me on that, but you know, but figures it was a hell of a lot more money. So, uh, it's all about timing. At the end of the day, you know, we're that like you guys are all impulsive because you're boxing fans, you want everything now. These things take time to build up a, a, a fan base, and, and uh, so that the, that the fight generates itself. And no, no promoter is going to put a, fo a fight on and throw away a load of money, you know. And if they do, then they're just stupid. So, um, you know, these things. It wait until it generates. It wait until they're proper ticket sellers, and wait until they've properly got something on the line, like a world title or both of a world title, and then do it as a new unification fight. Shane, just a few fights, I want to quickly get your thoughts on. Craig Richards getting ready for the Willie Hutchinson fight on the 5 vs 5. How's he looking? And do you agree that probably out of the 5 vs 5, that's the one which is more kind of set in most people's minds? A lot of people basically think that Craig will come through that fight as opposed to the other ones. As in... Harder to call the other ones compared to Craig. I don't know. I think Willie Hutchinson is a very talented guy and Craig Richards is, is a, is a uh, you know, he's a very honest and humble person he never, he never sort of expects wick, uh, expects uh, victory or wins so like he's training really really hard but he knows how good Willie Hutchinson is especially the gym rumors that you know I, I've had him in the gym when he was when he was just turned pro he's a very talented lad went up to Ingalls everyone was raving about him he was the next superstar gets knocked out by Lennox Clark because he's boiled down at super middleweight does it's not an easy fight you know this is a this is a this is a hard fight there's plenty of other fights on the card that I believe are easier fights I'm not going to name them but um, but that's that's the you know that's just the, the way it is. I, th I think um, I think it's, it's a competitive fight, and it's definitely a very competitive fight for the first six to eight rounds.
obviously the one fight which I'm sure you'll both be keeping an eye on is that main event. Nobody really talks about it because it's the main event for a five versus five, but better be Evan Bivol. What is your take on that? Ross, it's I, I just believe uh, Beterbiev or Beterbiev that you um, that you called him uh, is is on better form. Um, Bivol looked really really good when he boxed Canelo, and then he's kind of just been inactive a little bit and didn't look as good in his last one and he sort of laboured it you know I think you haven't had a, a Baturbi have looked a bit fragile and a little bit flat just before he boxed Callum Johnson then Callum Johnson dropped him like around that time he wasn't looking at his best and now he's really like he's come into his own and people might say that Anthony Yard fight was a competitive fight it wasn't really he just took his foot off the gas and then you know boxed in burst I think he was very very within himself for that fight and then Callum Smith was a was a Callum's a good fighter. He's a very good fighter. So to do that to Callum Smith, like he's on great form. Fury Usyk as well, Shane. Just quickly, your thoughts on that, please. Um, I hope it happens. I hope there's no injuries that happen last minute. I believe it. I believe it will happen. It's just I don't know. Um, we just don't know. We don't know what what Fury's got left. Um, we know that Usyk's not on the decline. Um, I didn't think the heavyweight was going to suit him when he when he first stepped up and boxed uh, Chisora, but he's filled into the weight a lot a lot more. You know, he's he just has kept his athleticism more as he's got older than Fury has, and I believe that he might beat him on points. Beat, Usyk beat Fury. Yeah, but it's a it's a it's a nip and tuck. I, I generally it's going to be like it's going to be a split decision, I believe, and it will be like seven five either way. I just think it's going to be one of them that we're going to we're going to be demand. There's a good thing there's a rematch because I, I believe like yo, know, I don't think there's going to be any eye catching like they're getting dropped or it will just be a very high highly fought, highly skilled um, fight that that's got that's got a bit of everything without the without the sort of power. It's a big decision, Shane. It's always controversial when somebody says something like that. But I just uh, but then again I've also said I believe that I just think recently I just feel like. Usyk's going to nick, nick him on points. I think he'll get out of the blocks quick and Fury will start, he'll have to turn the script and start putting the pressure on him and, and trying to use his size a little bit. But Usyk's got like over, he's got about 400 amateur fights. He's had guys try and do that his whole amateur career. So he's nimble and, and, and cute enough to be able to like, to pick and choose when to work. And I think it's just going to be one of them in the balance. Final one from me, Shane. Um, Deontay Wilder, Gilles Zhang, which way do you lead? I think uh, Zhang, if he trains, will knock him out. Shane, thank you and good luck with the rest of preparation. Thanks, mate.